Today on Groundworks, we're going to be installing OpenELEC into our previously assembled bare HTPC. Stay tuned. In a previous video, I assembled a bare HTPC, which is to say it was a computer, one that has the intent of being used as an HTPC in the future. To do so, we need an operating system. And the operating system, which is what I'm going to be installing in this video, is OpenELEC. It's worth noting too that OpenELEC is exactly that, an operating system. It is not just a piece of software. This is not the type of thing that you would install on top of Windows or inside a Ubuntu or something like that. It actually replaces Windows or Ubuntu. It also is not something that will run in a virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware or Parallels or any of those. So you need a dedicated, bare, physical PC to install OpenELEC. You can install OpenELEC into other platforms such as the Raspberry Pi, but whereas some of the steps are similar between the, the Raspberry Pi installation and a PC installation, they are different enough that it's probably in your best interest to actually find a separate video that is dedicated to just the Raspberry Pi. That said, even though this video is going to be tuned specifically towards the HTPC that I built earlier and the components that were installed, it's generic enough that you can probably adapt it to pretty much any bare PC that you've created. When this video is done, we are going to have a fully working HTPC, which is to say you can then actually watch your movies inside of your theater on it. So let's get started. We start by going to the OpenELEC website and clicking the download link. Scroll down to the 64-bit builds, but be careful because the first option is the update file and not the installation file. You want the disk image that's below. That's poor link placement on the OpenELEC website folks part, I think. I'm going to show you how to burn the OpenELEC image on a Mac. The steps are similar on Linux, and just use Win32 Disk Imager on Windows. Insert your USB drive, and then run DiskUtil to show all of the drives mounted on your Mac. It'll show up as external. If you have multiple external drives, then make use of the size and name to match up the drive number to the right drive. Unmount the drive, and then it's time for DD. This is what physically writes out the image. Note the R in the disk name. It means the same thing as the disk ID without the R, but DD just works faster if you include it. Type sync just to be sure and pop out your drive. It's ready to go. Plug the drive into your HTPC and start it up. It'll automatically boot into the installer screen. Select OK to start a quick install of OpenLA. In my case, I have a smaller SSD drive and a larger regular hard drive. I chose the SSD for the install and select OK. You need to manually select yes a couple of times to confirm that you do indeed want to nuke that entire drive. Let it do its thing and then select reboot. It reboots extremely quickly and jumps directly into the OpenLX setup wizard. First up is the host name of your HTPC. I named mine after my theater, although later I had to go back and change it to all lowercase. Next is the selection of your wired network. I didn't have mine plugged in when I took this video, but it'll typically be DHCP and you won't need to change anything. I enable SSH since it's quite a bit of backwork and work is easier to do when logged in. I'll show in a later video how to change that default password from OpenELEC to something that's not a complete security nightmare. Believe it or not, that's it for the installation. You now have a fully functional HTPC running Kodi. Booting into Kodi is extremely fast. Let's do this in real time, starting now. That's 14 seconds to reboot if you're counting. Impressive. Now let's do some backend work. We start by installing a public SSH key so that we can disable the root password and log in without any password at all. The easiest way is to just SCP over your existing public key into the authorized key files on your HTPC. Simple. After that, logging in is quick and it doesn't need any password. Next up, we'll set up our 6TB drive for bulk movie storage. We see that it's dev sdb, so start up the parted command on that drive. It's important to make a gpt partition table since the drive is too big for the old school partition tables. We'll make one partition that uses up the entire disk. Now that we have our drive partition, it's time to put a file system on this. We use ext4 since it's a great default choice, the large file option since we'll have exclusively very large files on it, and no super user to reserve space since there's no OS on it and so it's pointless. That could take a couple of minutes to complete. 
What's notable about newer OpenELEC installations is that secondary drives are now automatically mounted. You don't need to do anything special to mount them like you did with older versions. The drive is automatically mounted in VAR media with a default very ugly disk label. Let's change that. Go back into Parted, choose the drive and type in name, the partition number and whatever you want to call it. Reboot when you're done and the next time you check, your drive will be mounted with the name that you chose. Well. That was pretty easy. Now you have a fully functional Kodi installation on top of an operating system. You can just add your media, uh, configure the Kodi themes to your liking, and then have at it. Note that in this video, I didn't actually show how to add the media into Kodi. And the reason for that is because, well, I think that Kodi is actually pretty terrible at managing media. I mean, let's face it, Kodi is really good at a lot of things, but managing the files, <laughs> that's not one of them. So I'm using MB to actually do all the media management. And specifically, I embedded MB inside of OpenELEC. That's not a trivial task, and it's not something that really would be a good fit for this particular video. So I'm gonna create a separate video for that. When that one finally goes live, that's gonna be here. At that point, you should be able to just install it using the instructions found in that video, and you'll be able to have a first-class media management solution directly on your HTPC instead of having to have a separate box just for media management. Thanks for watching.